Hello guys, welcome to Baipu, where studying biology is cool and you know that. So in this video, what we are talking is about potassium argon dating. Now, why this dating is used? This dating is used to date or find the age of the volcanic rocks. Now, let's get into a concept directly. See, the potassium is present, uh, is actually the atomic number 19, okay? Potassium is atomic number 19, but it exists in three different uh, isotopes that is potassium 39 which is the most abundant one approximately 93.6 percentage okay and uh, the remaining uh, is approximately the potassium 41 that is approximately 6.7 percentage and a very um, little amount only a smidge is potassium 40 which is just 0.01 one seven percentage now this percentage is very 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 low but is of very very importance because this potassium 40 is radioactive it decays and what does it decays into it has a half-life of one to one point twenty five billion years that is one point twenty five into ten thirty is power nine years that is the half-life and in this half-life it decays into calcium and argon calcium of course that atomic number is 20 and argon that atomic number is 18 18 means stability it's a noble gas it does not react and that is of importance you will shortly we know why now pay attention now supposingly we have this uh, like uh, 200 atoms also like the 200 molecules of potassium 40 what happens is after one uh, after the one half life that is after the age of uh, 1.25 billion years out of this 200, the 100 will decay, okay, because 50% decays. Now, 100 will decay into, out of this 100, 89 percentage, that is 89 molecules will convert into calcium, okay. And only the 11 molecules will get converted into the argon. So, amount of argon is less, it is only the 11 percent, okay. So, only 11 uh, percent is argon, 89 percent is calcium. Now, how do we use it? Supposingly, just, just imagine, supposingly there was a volcano eruption, all the lava got like oozing out and it just went uh, like scrambling around the ground. Now, when the lava is in the molten form, it contains all kind of like uh, elements like potassium is there, argon is there, but the argon being a noble gas does not react with any of the other elements. So what happens to the argon is argon just uh, bubbles out, just moves out, just escapes out. Now, as the argon escapes out, uh, with time, of course, the lava would uh, solidify. Now, when the lava solidifies, because argon has escaped out, so in the solid form of the lava, you won't find any trace of uh, uh, argon 40. Now, but, but you have potassium 40 there. So, with, with the time will pass, the solid rock is formed, and some time will pass, slowly, gradually, this potassium 40 will slowly, gradually convert into argon 40 by uh, electron um, capture. Now, what is this electron capture? I'll just tell you in a nutshell. What happens is, uh, sometimes an uh, atom takes an electron, okay, and uses that electron to convert a proton into a neutron. So, proton gets converted into a neutron. So, atomic number decreases, but, ato uh, but atomic mass remains same. So, supposing there was potassium, one electron, it, it captured one electron. So, potassium 19 became pota uh, argon 18 because one proton has converted into a neutron. So, proton number, uh, this atomic number has decreased. Okay, but, um, uh, so this is a way. And of course, there is a liberation of the electron uh, neutrino. So, electron neutrino is liberated to balance out the electron number. So, okay, so that is the concept in this uh, uh, electron capture. So, that is the, uh, that, okay, so that is the concept actually. Well, not getting into all that physics, let's concentrate on the argon 40. Now, when this lava has solidified, I was telling you, when the lava has solidified, all the argon has evaporated. So in the solid lava, you will not find any trace of the argon 40. But with time, let's say uh, after some time, this potassium 40, which was there, okay, will convert into argon 40, okay. Now, supposedly we just find a volcanic rock. What we do is, we find out how much argon 40 is there. And we know that how this amount would have formed from the potassium 40. And we know how much time does it take to form that. 
So we just do some mathematical calculations and we calculate how old the rock is. Okay. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, I'll tell you, uh, you with a very simple example. Let's assume that there was a sample of a rock which contained 200 grams of potassium. We dug a rock and we find out that there's a 200 gram of potassium 40 there. Okay. Potassium 40. Now there's also like 2.2 gram of argon 40. And you know, this 2.2 gram of argon 40, uh, was not there when it solidified. It has come from potassium 40 only. Okay, now this 2.2 gram of argon 40 would have required uh, approximately 20 grams of potassium 40. As we know, the only 11% is remaining. So 11% of 20 is 2.2. So there must be like 20 grams of uh, uh, <clears throat> potassium 40 for this 2.2 gram of argon 40. So total amount of potassium 40, which there would have been, would have been like uh, 220 grams of potassium 40. Now the calculations are very, very easy. There was a 220 gram of potassium 40 that becomes our N0. Okay, that is the amount of potassium at time 0. And today we have 200 grams of potassium 40 that becomes NT, that's time now. We just divide 220 by 200, we get 1.1. That is the ratio by which it has decreased, which is equal to 2 to the power X as we know, where X is the number of half lives that are passed. Okay. So this 1.1 is equal to 2 to the power x. If we find x, we know how many half lives have been passed. So by calculation, we have 1.1 is equal to 2 to the power x. We just take the logarithm on both the side. We have log 2 to the power 2 to the power x is equal to log 1.1. We make it x log 2 is equal to uh, log 1.1. We have log 1.1 divided by log 2 is equal to x. And by calculating, we come to a value of 0 0.1375 is equal to x. So this is the number of times the half-life has passed. Now next, next is very simple. Just multiply this value by the amount about uh, by the half-life, that is 0 0.1375 into the half-life, that is 1.25 into 10 to the power 9. Okay, and just uh, doing the calculations and there is an approximate, I'm just getting an approximate value. There's an approximate round of value of 175 million years, 175 into 10 to the power 6. That is 175 million years. So this rock comes to be 175 million years ago. Now, how do we use it exactly? We do a kind of relative dating uh, for this, uh, for, because we don't uh, generally find, find fossils in a, in a uh, volcanic rock. There might be. Some animals might have got a trap, some plants might have got a trap in the volcanic rock. That is a possibility. But um, sometimes what we do is we find a we find a volcanic rock above, okay, and a volcanic rock below, and we find a sediment rock between, and we find a fossil there. So there's a volcanic rock above, volcanic rock below, and there's our fossil buried in between. Now, if it is untouched, if it has not been changed, not like no, no uh, turn over. So we know that this rock is a newer one or this one is the older one. Supposing this rock is, let's say this is the R rock, which is 175 million years ago. And the lower rock is like 190 million years ago. We find out with the same, like, uh, let's say with the same kind of calculations. So this is 175, this is 190. This simply means that the fossil between these two, okay, the fossil between these two must be somewhere of age, uh, like it should, it would not be older than 190 and would not be newer than 175. So it's age somewhere in between something like 180, 185, something like that. So that is the way we, by using the relative dating, we use the carbon, uh, sorry, potassium mark and dating. And that's all about the potassium mark and dating. And the consecutive video will talk about the electron spin resonance. And you do watch that video. That's the last point about the radioactive dating. Okay, that's all about from the Mahesh Kohli in Bioku. We're studying biology school. Keep watching, like, and subscribe. Thank you very much.